and welcome to the Idea Space Podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. Hey, welcome back to the Idea Space Podcast. I'm Jen Liddy, and I want to welcome you this week because remember, my goal is to help you learn what's in the way of achieving that goal that you've set or the one that lives way in the back of your mind that you don't give much attention to. And this month, I'm talking all things isolation. This seems like a horrible subject, right? I mean, isolation. Who the hell wants to talk about isolation? But I'm over here raising my hand because I love to have hard conversations that move us forward in our lives. And February is personally a hard month for me. I get mentally defeated because it's cold and dark and lonely in my life this month. It's the wind and the snow. It's the gray skies of Syracuse, the ice and the darkness. By this time of the month, I'm like, look, winter, I've had enough. (laughs) Go away. I just want to stay home in my snuggies, my hair in a messy bun, and just nest. You know, I don't want to connect with another soul. I want to just stay warm by the fire, avoiding the blowing wind outside. Now, maybe you love winter, and this isn't the particular place where you're struggling this month. Maybe you don't feel dark about that at all. But there's likely a place where you are hiding in isolation a place you're not showing up, a place you're not connecting. Maybe it's your business or that goal that you've wanted to achieve for a long time. Maybe it's your relationship. I mean, it's so easy to get sucked into the isolation vortex because sometimes we don't notice it's happening. I'm going to go back to my example of me being a ski widow on weekends. Now on paper, the fact that my husband takes my kid and leaves all day Saturday and Sunday sounds like an absolute dream, right? When I tell other women about this, their eyes light up with envy and they say, oh, I'd kill for that much time alone. And it, it is great until it isn't. And then I've depleted my energy by sitting or overworking or wasting time. I always take it too far. And last year I didn't notice until I was in a pretty dark, sad, and lonely place. And that's why I'm talking to you about this this year. Because when I noticed, I had to be real with myself. I had to stop feeling sorry for myself. I had to connect with what was really going on. And I realized I had isolated myself. So here are three questions I asked myself, and they might be useful to you as you're trying to figure out how to get out of isolation and into connecting. One, what's the situation really? Well, the situation is I'm not going to ask my husband and my child to stop skiing. They love it and it's a great bonding experience for them. They're happy. That's not changing and I don't want it to. So that's the situation really. Two, where am I screwing myself over really? Well, really, I've got to stop overworking and isolating myself on the weekends. Working can no longer be my default. And I've got to learn how to relax, have more fun and take on challenges that make me uncomfortable. For you, you might be screwing yourself over by avoiding the work that you know you need to do. So where are you screwing yourself over? Really, this requires you to be honest with yourself and it's often not fun. Acknowledge that up front. Three, what action am I willing to take really? Well, I needed an action plan because at the end of last winter, I was so depleted and I was really inert. So my action plan, I had to ask myself, what do I want to do on weekends so that I don't feel sorry for myself, lonely, or overwork to compensate? 
So I learned to implement a few tricks to help me connect. I've learned to schedule time with friends who are available on the weekends, to mastermind with colleagues who are available on the weekends, and to reach out to potential connections for networking and coffee. Sometimes I take myself to the movies or out to lunch, and sometimes I go out for a walk or to a yoga workshop, or I go get a massage. I consistently put these things on my calendar as repeating events, so I just remember to do them. Like for example, I'll just put a block that says self-care or lunch with a friend or get outside, and it's just on my calendar so that I can see it, and it reminds me like, oh yeah, I have to do that. I know it seems simple and it seems a little stupid that I have to remind myself, but I've worked with enough people to know that simply reminding ourselves sometimes is all it takes for us to remember our purpose and remember what we need. There's one last bastion of isolation that I want to cover with you. Many of my clients want to stay stuck in isolation by shooting all over themselves. Yes, you heard me right. They should all over themselves. They say things like, I should be able to do this by myself. I should have been able to figure this out by now. I should know how to do this already. And I did this too. I thought, I should be able to figure this out. Why is it so hard to enjoy being alone? I should be able to find a hobby to keep me busy. The thing was, I didn't know how to do any of those things. So I default to what I do know how to do, which is overeat and overwork. And that definitely kept me from my goals rather than moving forward. Why do we stay isolated? Why don't we ask for help? Oh, there are so many good reasons. Ego, money, shame, self-doubt. I mean, many people want to achieve something, but they refuse to connect with others. They stay isolated trying to do it all on their own or figure it out themselves. Here's an example. I met a woman who wants to leave her job and start a consulting company. She's got vast experience in her professional life and has become quite the expert but she's never started a consulting company before. She's never been in business for herself, much less started one from the ground up. She's isolated because she's not surrounded by people who know how to do this, yet she believes somehow she should be able to do it herself. How does this look in real life? Well, it's always the same. Create time to make your idea a reality. Instead of connecting with someone who can help, this woman wastes a lot of time researching and doubting herself. She needs support and guidance. She needs resources, but her unwillingness to connect and her commitment to isolation keeps her from working with a mentor who can guide her, help her, and make it easier on her. Why do people make this choice and ultimately stay stuck right where they are? Oh, lots of reasons. They don't want to spend the money. They don't think they're worth the money. They have a long-standing belief that asking for help is weak. Or they don't believe that even if they had help, they could achieve their goal. This is all some variation on a lack of self-belief. We don't believe we're worth it. We want to believe there's a website we should be able to go to, get the information, apply it right away, and make shit happen. But it doesn't work that way. Here's how it does work. We say we want something, and so we're excited, and we take a little bit of action. But then life gets hard and our calendars get crazy, so we get off track and lose trust in ourselves. We think limiting thoughts like, I can't do this or I don't know how. And then we sabotage with wasting time and we tell ourselves, oh, I just don't have time to make it happen. And then we abandon our goal because it's easier to abandon the goal. We lie to ourselves that it's all because we didn't have the time. So the trap that people fall into is they hide from the goal. They isolate themselves from others who will help them be accountable and help them move through the discomfort. Instead of getting help and support to move forward, they sabotage by being too busy. Most frequently, it looks like buffering, which is wasting time and calling it business or busyness. How do we waste time? So many ways. We spend time on things that don't serve us. We have a good story that it's all very necessary. We waste time being busy, multitasking, toggling back and forth between tasks so that we never get anything done, really. We waste time on social media telling ourselves that we're connecting with others and finding out what's going on in the world. We waste time overdoing something to make ourselves feel better, buffering with too much shopping, eating, drinking, cleaning, whatever. I have literally done 
all of these things. And they have brought me to my lowest, most unproductive points in my life. They have made me hate myself and doubt that I can get out of the isolation vortex. They have kept me stuck. When we remain isolated, out of connection with others, it's so easy to believe the lies our brains tell us. These little indulgences feel good in the moment and they make us think we're doing something productive, but actually we're just busy and busy keeps us from making our dreams a reality. Are you ready to stop being busy and start being productive? Is this your year to get that idea out into the world? Overcome isolation, find a mentor, make that dream real. My coaching programs are designed exactly to get you there without feeling lonely, overwhelmed, or confused. In the idea space, we've got a community of women who reach out to each other and support each other and share their ideas because they've learned that doing it alone just keeps them stuck. If you want to learn how to tame your calendar, make time your friend, and create that thing that's been hounding you for so long, go to my website www.jenliddy.com and learn how to get on a call with me to find out how I can help you start moving forward right away. Until then, I'll see you next week when I interview an amazing personal organizer who will help you declutter your life and move out of overwhelm and into action. See you then. Have a great week. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye. Thank you.